Welcome to Getting Started with Neon Intrinsics on Android. Before you begin, make sure you install Android Studio and have an ARM powered device available. In this tutorial, you'll learn to set up Android Studio for native C development and use Neon Intrinsics for an ARM powered mobile device. Many compilers automatically generate Neon instructions from your source code whenever it is appropriate. This is called auto vectorization. However, there may be times when the compiler fails to identify an opportunity to use Neon. In these situations, you could decide not to use a compiled high-level language at all. You would instead rewrite your code in a low-level assembly language using Neon instructions directly. This would be quite troublesome, and most people would rather avoid it. Neon Intrinsics provides an easier way to tell the compiler to use Neon instructions. They are function calls that a compiler replaces with an appropriate instruction or sequence of instructions. Intrinsics provides almost as much control as writing assembly language, but leave the allocation of the registers to the compiler. As an Android developer, this will let you focus on supporting the many needs of the app, rather than having the troublesome task of writing assembly language to get the maximum performance out of ARM's processors. Neon Intrinsics are advanced, single instruction, multiple data architecture extensions for ARM processors. They offer additional instructions that can perform mathematical operations in parallel on multiple data streams. This can improve the multimedia user experience by accelerating 2D and 3D graphics, user interfaces, gaming, and audio video encoding and decoding. Neon can accelerate signal processing algorithms and functions to speed up applications such as audio and video processing, voice and facial recognition, computer vision, and deep learning. So now that we know a little bit more about Neon Intrinsics, let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a new project. In the Project Template Selection screen, choose Native C++. If you don't see this selection, make sure you have the Phone and Tablet tab selected. Next, set up the application. Give your application a name, set the language to Java, and use the minimum SDK version of Android 4.4. Here, we want to set the C++ standard to Toolchain Default, then click Finish. Now that we have a fresh project, we need to install CMake and the Android NDK so we'll be able to build the project successfully. Now that we have the tools we need installed, we need to enable support for Neon Intrinsics. To do this, we will need to modify the ABI filters. Neon has two versions, one for ARMv7 and ARMv8 Arch32, and another one for ARMv8 Arch64. From an Intrinsics point of view, there are a few differences, such as the addition of Vector2 64-bit float elements in ARM8A. To enable these versions, we will navigate to the Gradle scripts. Then open build.gradle module app. In default config, we add the following line. This adds support for x86, 32-bit, and 64-bit ARM architecture. In the topmost CMake section, we'll add this line. Now we can use Neon Intrinsics. It's important to note that the build will only be successful for ARMv7 and above. Now that we have everything set up, let's implement the dot product of two vectors using C++. It's important to know that starting from ARMv8.4a, the dot product is part of the new instruction set. This corresponds to some of the Cortex-A75 designs and all of the Cortex-A76 and onward. For a bit more information on this, see the link in the description down below for exploring the ARM.product instructions. Our code should be placed in the native lib.cpp. We will find this under the cpp file. First, let's write a helper function to generate a ramp vector. This function takes a start value and a length then generates a one-dimensional vector of 16-bit integers with increasing values. Next, we'll add the function that will calculate the dot product. Getting the dot product is pretty simple. We will multiply the vectors element by element, then accumulate the result. This implementation uses a for loop. We will sequentially multiply corresponding vector elements and then accumulate the resulting products into a local variable called result. This code will compile and work just fine, and we'll calculate the current dot product but it won't use Neon Instructions, so it won't be as fast as it possibly could be. Later, we'll show you how to use Neon Instructions to rewrite this function and get the best performance. Next, we'll add the functions that we will use to determine the execution time. The ms elapsed time function calculates the duration that passed from a given start time in milliseconds. Now we'll add a handy wrapper function. This will return the value of the current time. Be sure to add the following declaration to the file to enable Neon Intrinsics. With those functions complete, we can start to implement Neon Intrinsics. First, we will modify our dot product function. We will need to split the for loop so that it will use data lines to achieve this. To do so, we will partition or vectorize the loop to operate on sequences of data during a single CPU cycle. These sequences are called vectors, 
but to help distinguish them from our input vectors, I'll refer to them as register vectors. By using register vectors, we can reduce the loop iteration so that every time we iterate, we multiply and accumulate multiple vector elements to accumulate the dot product. The number of elements you can work with will depend on the register layout. Arm Neon uses a 64-bit or 128-bit register file. In the case of 64-bit, we can work with either 8 8-bit, 4 16-bit, or two 32-bit elements. For the 128-bit case, we can work with either 16 8-bit, 8 16-bit, 4 32-bit, or two 64-bit elements. To represent various register vectors, Neon Intrinsics uses the following naming convention. The type is the data type, such as int, uint, float, or poly. Size is the number of bits used for the data type, options being 8, 16, 32, or 64. Number of lanes defines how many lanes. So for an example, this register vector will represent a vector register with four lanes of 16-bit integer elements. This is the equivalent of a four-element 16-int one-dimensional array. Here we have the dot product neon function. The mathematics works the same as before, but now we're using the dedicated functions, the neon intrinsics, to load the data from our arrays into the neon registers and perform mathematical operations on the data. The names of these neon intrinsics start with VLD. The function naming uses a convention like the one for register vector naming. So in this case, V will be for vector, LD for load, and S16 for the number of bits to specify the input data type. Neon intrinsics directly correspond to the assembly instructions. Here, we use this neon intrinsic to load data from memory. It loads four elements of the array of signed 16-bit integers to the CPU registers. We use the duplicate function to set all the CPU lanes of a neon register to the specific value. In this case, the value is zero. It's the vectorized equivalent of writing int sum equals zero. Once the elements are in the neon registers, we can add them using the multiply and accumulate function. These functions add elements from two arrays and accumulates the result in a third array. Here, the array is stored in the partial sums neon variable. Once all the loop iterations are complete, we need to store the resulting sums back to memory. We either read the results element by element using the vector get lane functions, or store the whole vector using the vector store functions. Here, we are using the second option. Now that the partial sums are back into memory, we can add them to get the final result. If you're using Arch64, you can also use this so you can skip the second for loop. Now, we can put all the code together by modifying this function. Firstly, we'll need to create two equal length vectors using the generate ramp functions. Next, we will calculate the dot product of those vectors using the non-neon function. We will repeat this calculation several times and measure the computation time using the ms elapse time function. Now, we repeat the same operations, this time using the neon enabled dot product neon function. Finally, we combine the results along with the computation times within the result string. This will be displayed in the text view of the app. Now your app is ready to be built. This is the results from my build. It shows a 7% improvement simply by using Neon Intrinsics. For more videos in this series, the source code for this project, and more information about ARM Neon Intrinsics, visit the ARM developer website. Links in the description down below.